Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to solve problem number 4 under the topic Nyquist plot. The problem is sketch the Nyquist plot for the system with the given transfer function. Comment on the stability. The first step is we are checking whether any poles are lying on the right half of the S plane. So here poles are nothing but they are the denominator terms. So here in the denominator we are having three terms right. So now we are going to check whether any pole is lying on the right half of S plane. So here we are equating these three terms to 0. So when you equate you see what happens S square is equal to 0 and here 1 plus 0.1 S is equal to 0. So when you solve this here the value of S is minus 10. And again 1 plus 0 0.02 s is equal to 0 and here finally when you solve the answer is s is equal to minus 50. So here now we can tell right whether any poles are lying on the right half no because we are having you see this is your s plane right and one pole is here the value is 0 and another one is minus 10 and another one is minus 50. So, there is no pole on the right half of the S plane, right? So, number of poles lying on the right half of the S plane is equal to 0. Then, the step 2 is, we are going to find the number of encirclements. The formula is N is equal to P minus Z. P is number of poles lying on the right half of S plane and Z is number of zeros lying on the right half of S plane. So, here again, when you look back at the problem, we had already find out right all the poles are lying on the left half of S plane. Again we are having a zero term right. The terms which are in the numerator are known as zero. So when you equate this and you solve this again here you will be getting a zero which lies on the left half of S plane. So therefore zeros lying on the right half of S plane is also zero. So finally the number of encirclement is zero. So here Nyquist plot should not encircle this minus 1 plus j0 point, right. And step 3 is we are going to draw the rough Nyquist plot. Again, here you see there is a pole at origin here, okay. There is not a single pole. We are having two poles at origin. So whenever there is a pole at origin, how to draw the rough Nyquist plot? You should draw the rough Nyquist plot in such a way that it bypasses the pole okay it bypasses the origin right so this is your rough Nyquist plot so here in this Nyquist plot it is divided into many sections so here this is a general graph right we all know so this is zero degree when you move in clockwise the angles are negative and when you move in anti-clockwise the angles are positive right and here you see this is your first section. This is your section 1. So we are starting that is the maximum value is plus infinity and it ends at plus 0. And again this small semicircle is your section 2. So it starts at again plus 0 and it ends at minus 0. And this is your third section. It starts at minus 0 and ends at minus infinity. And finally the fourth section is it starts at minus infinity and it ends at plus infinity right so this is our rough Nyquist plot the next step is step number four here we are going to find expressions for magnitude and phase angle right so from the given problem we have replaced s by j omega so when you replace s by j omega we are getting an expression like this right and the next step is calculating the magnitude so here how to calculate the magnitude it is nothing but you have to square all the terms and you have to take square root also both should be done together so here you see square root of 1 plus 0.5 omega the whole square and here we are having j omega square so once you solve here we will be getting the answer as omega square because uh, when you take here once square root is taken and you see it will be like this we will be taking first square root right square root of omega square the whole square then what happens this square root and this two cancels each other and finally we are getting an expression like this right and for this expression square root of 1 plus 0.1 omega the whole square 
and again here 1 plus 0 0.02 omega the whole square right so this is the expression for magnitude and next we are going to find the expression for phase angle so here the phase angle is given by Again, we are having omega square in the denominator, right? So, a single omega contributes an angle of 90 degree. Then, what about omega square? It contributes 180 degree. Since these three terms are in the denominator, I am going to move these terms to the numerator part. So, here we are including minus sign. So, you see, so for this term, here it is minus 180 degree. Again, here, how to write expression for this term? Tan inverse of 0.1 omega by 1. Again, this is a denominator term. I am moving it to the numerator. So, here I am including a minus. Again, for this expression also the same thing. Here I am including a minus tan inverse of imaginary coefficient by real term. Right. And finally, we are having an another term in the numerator. Right. So, this numerator term will come with a positive sign. So, here you see I had written as plus tan inverse of 0.5 omega. Right. And the next thing is we are going to analyze section wise so now we are going to consider our section one so in this section one we have to find out what is the starting value and what is the ending value so this is our section one right so it starts at plus infinity and it ends at plus zero so just substitute these two values here so initially we are going to substitute omega as infinity when you substitute here anything divided by infinity gives you zero right and again when you substitute the value of omega as infinity what happens here tan inverse of infinity here also tan inverse of infinity and here also tan inverse of infinity so tan inverse of infinity is nothing but it will give you an angle of 90 degree and again here it is 90 degree and again here it is plus 90 degree right so this minus here this comes with minus right because here we are having minus so this minus 90 degree and this plus 90 degree will cancel each other and finally we will be having minus 180 minus 90 so what will be the answer here when you add these two here the answer will be minus 270 degrees right so so here we had written the value as minus 270 degree right and the next step we are going to substitute the value of omega as 0. So here when you substitute the value of omega as 0 anything divided by 0 is infinity right. So here I had written infinity and again substitute the value of omega as 0 in this expression. So tan inverse of 0 is 0 here also 0 this value also becomes 0. So finally what will be the angle the angle is minus 180 degree. So here it is minus 180 degree right now as usual our calculation we have to find the angle of rotation so we are sub subtracting 270 degree from this 180 degree so 180 minus 180 minus of minus 270 so that gives the answer as plus 90 degree so what is this plus sign indicates this plus sign indicates the rotation should be in anti-clockwise direction right now we are going to analyze section 2 so here in section 2 what is the starting point it starts at plus 0 and it ends at minus 0. So here it starts at plus 0 at, and it ends at minus 0. So just substitute the values here. When you substitute the value of omega as 0. So here again you see here when you substitute the value of omega as 0 what happens anything divided by 0 is infinity right and again for both the cases because one is plus 0 and another one is minus 0 right so here both are both the magnitudes are infinity so while calculating the phase angle here again we are going to substitute the value of omega as 0 so when you substitute omega as 0 these three terms become 0 and our answer is minus 180 degree right so here it is written as minus 180 the second thing we are going to substitute this as minus 0 right so 
again plus 0 or minus 0 both means the same but here in Nyquist plot whenever you substitute omega as minus 0 again these three terms will reduce to 0 and again we will be having the angle as minus 180 degree but here we have to include a another minus sign so minus into minus will become plus 180 degree so here I had written it as plus 180 degree right and again when you calculate the angle what happens 180 minus of minus 180 so that gives the answer as plus 360 degree again plus indicates the direction as anti-clockwise right and again as usual here section 3 is nothing but mirror image of section 1 so this is our section 3 right it starts at minus 0 and it ends at minus infinity you see this will be the exact mirror image of this section 1, right? So, we can simply write it as mirror image of section 1. And section 4, no need because both are having infinity values. So, no need to solve that, right? Then the step 5 is rationalizing. That is here we are going to find omega p, c and q, right? So, the first step is again as usual we are going to substitute s by j omega so here we are having a value like this right and the next thing is we are going to rationalize so rationalizing is nothing but here we are having denominator terms right we are having three denominator terms we are going to just replace the plus sign by minus sign that's it so here we are having plus j omega whole square so here it will be minus j omega whole square and here 1 plus 0.1 j omega so here 1 minus similarly here 1 plus 0.02 so here 1 minus 0.02 we are going to multiply and divide both the multiply and dividing the same term okay so that the original term won't get affected the value of the term remains the same so here what happens the next step is we are going to solve so once you solve you see here omega omega to the power 2 is omega square and here we are having minus sign right so j square will give you minus 1 so minus 1 into minus will give you plus so here i had written as plus omega square right and the denominator terms here we are going to combine here we are having j omega whole square and here minus j omega whole square so again omega square into omega square gives you omega to the power 4 right and again here j square gives you minus 1 and here j square give you again minus 1 so again we are having a minus and this minus to the power square will give you plus so here we are having a minus sign right so minus omega to the power 4 and here you see again the same formula it is of the term a plus b and here a minus b so a plus b into a minus b is nothing but a square minus b square similarly for these two terms so when you solve here we will be getting the answer like this right then so here again these two terms cancels each other so in denominator i am having minus omega square right and again we are having the denominator term as such and we are multiplying the numerator terms first i am multiplying these two terms so once you multiply what happens that is 1 into 1 plus 0.5 j omega 1 plus 0.5 j omega the next step is minus 0.1 j omega we are going to multiply this term with this one first so this gives minus 0.1 j omega and again when you multiply these two terms that give plus 0 0.05 omega square right and here this term here as such and the next thing is again i am going to multiply these two terms so after multiplying here you see after multiplying finally i am having an answer that is i am getting answer like this and again i am simplifying after simplifying next i am separating the real and imaginary terms right here you see instead of writing the whole denominator term every time here i had simply written it as d but here you have to mention d is nothing but this expression okay this is the expression which is denoted as d you should write it right so here finally we had formed an expression like this which contains real and imaginary terms right 
Now, the first thing is we are going to equate the imaginary term to 0. So, when you equate imaginary term, then we will be finding the value of omega pc. So, 0.38 omega minus 0 0.01 omega cube is equal to 0. So, now I am moving this term to the right hand side so it becomes positive and this omega and omega cube cancels each other and finally I am having omega square. The value of omega square is 380 and omega is nothing but 19.49 radian per second. Right. Now we had find out the value of omega pc. Right. Now we are going to substitute this value in the real term. So here our real term is this is our real term, right? That is 0 0.058 omega square plus 1 divided by d is the real term. So, this is our real term expression. Now, I am going to substitute the value of omega pc as that is omega value as 19.49 or instead the previous previously we are finding that right, the value of omega square as 380 you can directly substitute it will be very easy because you see we are having only omega square so just substitute omega square directly so once you substitute the values and by solving here i am getting the expression as minus 0 0.0109 so q is nothing but this is the intersection point on the negative real axis Right. Only depending upon the value of Q, we will be saying that the system is stable or unstable. Right. Now we are going to draw the Nyquist plot. Just listen carefully. This problem is a bit different. Right. So here you see the starting point is 0 minus 270 degree and it ends at infinity minus 180 degree and the rotation is plus 90 degree that is it covers only one quadrant right but here what does this q represents just now i said right q is nothing but intersecting point on the negative real axis that is we we have to draw a plot in such a way that it will intersect the negative real axis. That is, there is an intersection point over there. Right. So, while drawing for section 1. So, this is our section 1 values. This is our starting point. This is our ending point. So, here where it starts 0 with an angle of minus 270 degree. So, here this is our minus 270 degree line and here it starts at 0 right and here it have to rotate anti-clockwise with an angle of 90 degrees so 90 degree indicates that it should cover only one quadrant so here it starts here and it travels and where it has to get ended it should end at infinity minus 180 degree so this is our plus or minus 180 degree line right so it starts here it travels here and it ends here right this is based upon our section 1 analysis right but what happens you see here we are having a q value q is nothing but it is the we are drawing a plot right this plot okay we have drawn a plot like this this plot should intersect okay it should intersect the negative real axis and this is our negative real axis but what happens here here the plot starts here but it ends here it didn't intersect can you understand what i am saying right so what we are doing is since we are having an intersection point okay since we are having an intersection value here just we are drawing a plot just like this it starts here it travels in anti-clockwise direction since it is having an intersecting point we are just intersecting the negative real axis and where is the ending point it ends at infinity minus 180 degree so plus or minus both the lines are same plus or minus 180 degree is same so here it get intersects and just it meets the minus 180 degree line somewhere at infinity right am i making the concept clear According to our section 1 analysis, okay, this is our section 1 analysis. This is your starting point, right? And this is your ending point and this is the angle and how much quadrant it should cover. That is direction and how much quadrant it should cover. This is the indication here. 
So, it starts here at 0 minus 270 degree. Right. And it travels 90 degree. That means plus 90 degree. Anticlockwise, it covers only one quadrant. So, it starts here, it travels and it ends here. Right. Even this ending point also, we can consider it as infinity at minus 180 degree. Nothing is wrong. But here, we are having an intersection point, right? So, this intersection point is nothing but we are drawing a plot and that plot should cut, okay? It should cut the negative real axis at this value. This is the indication. Since I am having a value of Q, I am drawing this graph as it starts here and it can even end here but it should intersect our negative real axis so that is the reason here i have intersected the negative real axis and again this is going to end somewhere at 180 degree at the magnitude of infinity right am i making the concept clear yes now the section one analysis is done now we are going to move to our section two so, these are the values of section 2, right? It starts at infinity minus 180 degree. So, here it is somewhere around here and it travels in, you see, plus sign, right? So, anticlockwise direction at an angle of 360 degrees. So, here it starts here, right? And it covers, 360 degree means it have to cover 4 quadrant, that is a complete circle, right? So, it starts here. And it moves in anticlockwise. So it goes here, it goes here, it goes here and finally it ends here. Because it has covered a rotation of 360 degrees. Right. So this is our section 2 analysis. And previously we have seen, right, section 3 is nothing but it is a mirror image of section 1. So this is your section 1. Right. So the mirror image of section 1 should be like this. So this is your section 3. Right. So, here, this is our final Nyquist plot. Right. I hope I had made you clear. If you have any doubt, let me know. Right. So, this is our final Nyquist plot. Now, we are going to tell whether the system is stable or unstable. So, what is the condition for stability? That is, this, that is, this encirclement Okay, this encirclement should not cover this minus 1 point, right? So, here what is the value of Q? Q is given by minus 0 0.01, right? Now, tell me whether minus 1 will lie inside this encirclement or it is lying somewhere outside because this point is 0 0.01, right? So, automatically 0 0.05 and again this minus 1 will be lying somewhere outside okay this point minus 1 is not encircled right because since the value of q is only this much for example if you are having the value of q as minus 2 then what happens if this point is minus 2 then automatically minus 1 will be lying inside this encirclement right so since the value is minus 0 0.01 the minus 1 point lies somewhere outside right so from this plot right what happens the number of encirclement is zero because the minus one point lies somewhere outside here it is not encircled so this matches with step number two right here the number of encirclement from step number two is also zero since both these conditions matches each other, that is from the diagram also the number of encirclement is 0 and from analysis also the number of encirclement is 0. Okay, this is done in step number 2. So, finally we are concluding that the system is stable. Right, here comes the end of this problem. Thank you.